Hey everyone, we have a great opportunity today. We've talked a lot about NSX and obviously VMworld is the coming out party for NSX. And I'm here with the co-founder of Nicera, Martin Casado. Martin, can you tell a little bit more about your role in Nicera and why you started the, uh, the network virtualization branch? What was wrong with networking? Oh, sure. Yeah, so um, actually this kind of all started when I was at Stanford. And um, actually it started previously to Stanford, so I was, um, I used to work in the government, uh, in the intelligence agencies, in fact. And it's kind of interesting. So, like, uh, the government, like, its view of the world is very different than, say, most industry, right? Like, for example, the, the threat assumption is, like, there's a nation state out there or something to that effect, right? And so, um, you know, I was working in these very secure networks, and it was very clear that there was a mismatch between how computers um, could adapt to these and how networks. So with computers, if the government needed to program them to kind of work in this kind of somewhat extreme environment, they could. But the network, you couldn't really program it. It didn't have that kind of malleability. There wasn't really a programming model. So the network, we kind of like, you know, we had a, you know, whatever was shipped is what we would use and we'd try our best, but it was clear that it didn't have the flexibility. So when I went to Stanford, the goal was, okay, I want to actually see whether it's possible to change networking in a way that makes it more like compute as far as making it programmable and flexible and have a software model. And so that was the work that I did at Stanford. Uh, when I graduated, we started Nasira, and the goal was, okay, so we want to now see if we can use this problem to solve the operational issue in networking. So that's kind of the, the long sorted story. Okay, perfect. Well, we had the uh, the 101 with Brad Headland, uh, a little bit more of a deep dive with Bruce Davey about uh, OVSDB. Um, so you always start out as somewhat of a modest um, well solution, uh, but obviously it's getting more interesting as the company matures and the products mature. So where do you think this this well solution is going to go in a couple couple of years? Yeah, sure. So no, so this is, I think you're exactly right. So like when new technologies are introduced, <clears throat> it takes us a while to actually kind of understand them, right? So first off, we just want to try them and have simple proof points. I think it gets, compute virtualization is a perfect analog for this. So when compute virtualization was first introduced to the market, um, you know, the, the use case and the value proposition to customers was really simple. It was like server consolidation. And instead of buying two servers, you buy one server and you get higher efficiency and you save money, right? And customers understood that and they bought that. But if you look at the real impact of compute virtualization, it's everything that it's unlocked from the operational standpoint. It's the fact that we can move workloads now and it changed the operational model. So you go from a very simple value proposition to one that's a lot more sophisticated and complex, right? And so <clears throat> the same thing is happening with network virtualization. So in the very beginning, the value proposition was very simple, which is agility. So it, the value to the customer is it will reduce the time it takes to provision a network so you can get business done faster, you can onboard customers faster, you can innovate faster, and so forth. So this is a great question, okay, what happens next? Um, and so you know, we're focusing in a number of areas. So one of them that is a very special, uh, uh, a very special interest to me is, um, is around the policy space. So once you automate operations and once you automate config, you still have to declare business language, right? You still have to declare things like who can talk talk to who and, and how they can talk to each other and what services should be there and what sort of auditing should be there and so forth. And that you can't automate it because it's unique to every one of these customers, right? And so there's a number of um, uh, aspects of our solution that I think can allow us to really innovate in the space. So for example, because we're in the hypervisor, we're very close to the application. And we get a really fine-grained understanding of what applications are running and what users are on there. And we can do this without really guessing. So I think we have a much richer, semantically meaningful namespace. And secondly, because it's incredibly flexible, um, I think we can declare very simple policies and then have them stay totally invariant because we have this virtual view that they go on top of. So the policy space is one I'm very interested in. A second area that I'm very interested in is visibility and debugging and, and management. So again, when you do a network virtualization solution, um, you have to maintain state at the entire network at the edge. So we actually have these global views of the network. And I don't think that you've had the same type of state before. And so from these global views, I think we can get it like insight and visibility into you know, the traffic, trending, um, anything that's going on from a security perspective that's kind of far beyond what we've seen today. And so what I'm really excited about is at this platform takes off and as people understand it, we can kind of push into these areas and many others that we haven't quite frankly thought of today.
Yeah, exactly. Well, you, you mentioned uh, simplicity, um, vision of the network, a view of the network that we haven't seen today. One of the questions I often get is, well, we're, we're overlaying the network now with a, with a new virtualization layer. How does that, that imp uh, impact the visibility of network issues? Aren't we complicating things? Um, I think it's the complete other way, but maybe you can explain it in your words as well. Yeah, that's right. So actually, uh, let me say two things to this. So the first one is, if you look at many modern data centers, they look exactly like our architecture does. So many you know, Web 2.0 and mega data centers and new data centers, they build very simple physical switching infrastructure and then um, everything else happens at the application layer, right? So things that have traditionally been in the network, things like billing, things like uh, load balancing, things like accounting, things like visibility. And the reason that these are implemented at the application layer in the application is because you're closer to truth, right? You're, you're higher up, you have more semantics. Um, and because it's in software, you can evolve it much more quickly, right? So you've got software innovation speed instead of like hardware innovation speeds. So you're decoupling the problem of providing a cost effective bandwidth network with the rich functionality. And this is a large percentage of the workload, right? It's, you know, it's the Googles and the Facebooks and the Amazons and the Tencents and the Baidus, right? And it's a very, very successful model. So what we want to do is we want to provide the same type of model as far as software innovation speed, as far as scale, as far as performance, um, as far as decoupling the two architectures. But we also get to enjoy the same types of benefits that 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 these guys see, which is because we're closer to the application, like you know I mentioned previously, um, we actually have better visibility. Like we know who is where and where things are moving around, and we can provide these very clean abstractions. Whereas today, when everything's in the network, you kind of have to figure out where things are, and you don't really know because, you know, again from a network view, you don't have this rich edge semantics. So actually, I think it actually improves the case quite a bit. Okay, well, thank you very much. I mean, for me, this makes it a lot clearer, and I think for our viewers as well. So if you're here at VMworld, make sure you watch some of the sessions that are being given uh, about NSX or follow the labs. And if you're at home, be sure to check out the VMware website and follow everything, all the news about the blogs on VMworld uh, and the network virtualization, of course. Martin, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us, and, and good luck with all your meetings. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you.